comparing the range of food served at the banquet of a Sir Nazir Pal II with the types of foodstuffs the food managers were concerned with, the management of the most important components of the elite's menu, including grain, meat, and wine, was undertaken by separate officials. In the following we will take a closer look at selected food managing offices, in order to gain a better understanding of the activities of the food managers in connection with the acquisition, transport, storage, and distribution of the foodstuffs for the benefit of the royal household, inevitably including also deliveries to the temple. Since the chief of granaries, the chief cook and the wine master are comparatively well attested among the food managers and since each of these offices represents one of the categories of food managers established above, they are the most suitable candidates for such an examination. The chief of granaries, as his title suggests, was in charge of large storage facilities for grain. This is best documented by an administrative record from 8th century Kalu according to which the storehouse under the responsibility of the unnamed granary master in the land of Bertu received in total 12,800 homers of barley rations collected from various different places. Hence, corn from local centers was stored in the granary of that region administered by the granary master. In three legal records from 7th century Kalu, Fort Shalmaneser, the chief of granaries is concerned with the collection of the corn and straw taxes from royal land. This type of land, which seems to have been maintenance land for the king, or his household, was apparently placed at the disposal of Amae, Uedina respectively, who were liable to pay taxes in return for its usufruct. In another administrative record, bearing the same archival background as the chief of granaries Sagilari U, Yor is listed along with 4,000 homers of barley. In the same record also the fodder master is listed along with 2,000, a certain Kapti with 7,000, and the Rab Janibate with 1,000 homers of barley, and the city of Nineveh is recorded with 3,050 homers of barley, which were collected in Ter-Alia from provincial cities located in the Assyrian heartland north of Nineveh. Since the deliveries were made to Nineveh, the grain amounts in Nineveh and in charge of the officials may have been meant for another final destination, perhaps the place where the tablet was found and the imperial capital at that time. In any case, this document reveals the operation of the barley supply for the urban centers of the Assyrian heartland, something that is also reflected in the administrative text where 70 homers, 7 seos, of grain, the total imposed upon several men listed by personal name, are said to be for Anna, Nineveh. The chief of granaries also supplied individual palace departments and palace members with grain, as is clear from legal texts recording administrative procedures. When the chief of granaries owes 200 barley rations to be delivered to Jirurukin, this reflects an official obligation rather than a personal loan. Presumably also, possibly, the chief of granaries owed four barley rations in late Neo-Assyrian times, acted here in his official capacity, not least because the indebted barley is qualified as fodder which in other legal records from Fort Shalmaneser marks their administrative background. Hence, in both cases, the chief of granaries was ex officio obliged to supply amounts of grain which he did not yet manage to deliver. In other cases, the chief of granaries appears as a provider of corn for temple offerings. This can be placed in the context of general duties that were also imposed on other officials, primarily the high state officials, who had appropriate resources at their disposal. According to the letter of the scholar Akalanu to the king, a Sir Banipal, the chief of granaries is listed among the officials, mainly provincial governors, who did not yet hand in their contributions of barley and emma for the regular offerings in the Or temple. Hence, the chief of granaries, and his establishment, had separate resources available, independent of the provincial stocks of grain. Although the title Rab Karmani explicitly refers to the Kamu, this official never actually occurs in association with such an installation. Rather, the chief of granaries is once recorded as being responsible for a storage facility called the Kamtua term which is otherwise often used to refer to the treasury or treasury houses containing precious metals or associated with horses. Thus, the Nakamtu did not serve exclusively as a storage facility for grain, as was the case with Kamu. Since one would, nevertheless, assume that the Rab Karmani was responsible for the establishment's designated Kamu in the Neo-Assyrian sources, we shall have a brief look at the Assyrian evidence for Kamu which was only recently examined by Faced and Lop both Faced, for the Neo-Assyrian period, and Lop conclude that this term primarily refers to royal or governmental granaries for the storage of the king's grain intended for the benefit of the king's household. 
This seems especially plausible on the basis of the Middle Assyrian evidence which suggests that apart from the imperial capital Assur also all the provincial capitals had their own royal. Kamu. Also according to the Neo-Assyrian state correspondence, the Kamu was an institutional facility which was mainly at the disposal of provincial governors, not least for supplying the army. Another relevant reference to the Kamu, the only Neo-Assyrian attestation written with the determinative occurs in a letter of Amarili. Here, Amarili reports to the king that the Kamu between the storehouse of the palace supervisor has fallen down. This incident might or might not have taken place in Amarili's possible place of work, but it shows that the Kamu was an urban installation, well integrated into the cityscape and rather close to the palace. The Kamu was administered by provincial authorities, the deputy governor, but had a particular connection to the king and his household, judging by its description of the king. This, together with the other evidence, indicates that the Middle Assyrian system of installing royal granaries in provincial capitals was maintained in the Neo-Assyrian period. In addition to this, however, the sources of the Neo-Assyrian period also refer to a Kamu, the Nabu temple, and of the house of the skilled men, while in the Middle Assyrian texts Kamus of the Or temple and of individuals may be attested. Hence, Kamu was also used as a generic term for storage facilities of grain, and the Rab Kamani was not responsible for all of these individual establishments, but he took care of the granaries of the royal household, which were administered separately from the provincial ones. Apart from his general duty to provide grain for offerings in the Or temple he does not seem to have been concerned with the corn supply for temples.